Hello, and welcome to Creepy Core and Folklore, the show about creatures, encounters, old tales, and myths. I'm your host, Iona Wayland, a dark fantasy author, mental health professional, and overall curious person. I want to join other spooky souls and hear about these unusual stories. Hello, spooky soul. Um, this creepy corn folklore episode is extra special. We're visiting with another CCFL guest. Joining us today is composer, dog and cat mom, and soon to be author, Haley Turner. We're going to talk about the first cryptid I was ever obsessed with, the Loch Ness Monster. Haley has a unique experience since she lived in England and was able to visit Scotland, and she went on a Nessie tour. So welcome, Haley. I'm so excited you're here. Thank you for taking time out of your day to speak with me and this fellow spooky soul who's listening. Yes, I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for having me. So before we get started, I have a really embarrassing story to tell you, which I started telling you about (laughs) anyway. (laughs) But um, I have always been obsessed with Nessie, Um, (laughs) the Loch Ness Monster, in case um, the spooky soul who's listening doesn't know who Nessie is it's a Loch Ness monster but when I first saw photos like photos are absolute truth as everyone knows when you see a photo of something yeah it's totally (laughs) true and I was like in awe I was like oh my gosh here is proof that there's this unique like animal that lives in the Loch Ness in Scotland and the Loch of Scotland so um during third grade I'm pretty sure it was third grade it might have been second but we were supposed to choose a quote unique animal to do like a project on. Um, and so I was like presenting and had my stupid trifold and everyone <laughs> was like really quiet as I'm like talking about Nessie because she's the one I chose. <laughs> and this one know-it-all girl was like, she's not real or like, that's not real or something like that. I can't remember. But I just like glared at her and I continued talking and like I tried to ignore it. Um, And there were some people in the class, clearly, who are other spooky souls who were interested. Um, But I kept referring them to the pictures, like, clearly, like, this is a real thing because there are photos of black and white people. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, And then at recess, this girl would not, like, give it up. And she kept challenging me. And I got so mad that I started, like, shaking and, like, bawling my fist back. And I was, like, I hauled back my my arm like I was gonna I was gonna punch her (laughs) (laughs) I was gonna fight I was gonna fight a bitch for Nessie ready ready to throw hands for Nessie (laughs) (laughs) I love it and then we both got in trouble because there was gonna be a fist fight that was about to start so we both got in trouble and then um I'm like so embarrassed because (laughs) as I got older um I realized that she may have been valid. <laughs> You're like, oh, well. Oh, okay. maybe there's other evidence <laughs> out there. Um, so I just wanted you to know, like, <laughs> why I'm so interested. Um, but and I was so excited when you got to when you told me that you went on a Nessie tour. But now yes. I got my embarrassing story out of the way. So why don't you tell us about um yourself and then also like your rendition of Nessie's story that you know about. Yes. Oh my gosh. Um, so, I mean, I first heard of Nessie when I was a kid, you know, in like mm-hmm. movies and cartoons and things. And mm-hmm. I was so intrigued by the idea of a monster or like a cryptid in a lake mm-hmm. um, because I grew up going to the beach pretty frequently. And I was mm-hmm. always like super fascinated with like large bodies of water and creatures that are like hidden within the depths. And I was mm-hmm. especially intrigued by Nessie because of like like you said, there's like pictures. There's so uh, many there's sightings. pictures. There's so many sightings that have been around. So it's like mm-hmm. I, as a simultaneously like whimsical but also skeptical person, I was mm-hmm. like, this might be a cryptid that like actually exists. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I was like, wow, there uh-huh. there's like something here. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I lived in England for a semester in 2016 Mm -hmm. and when I was in college as a study abroad semester and um, while I was, oh my gosh, it was, it was great. Um, And on a a weekend, 
it was actually my birthday weekend, <laughs> which was really cool. That makes it we, extra special. It was so special. So on a weekend, they had a um a trip for specifically just like the international students that were there at the time. Mm -hmm. And we all piled onto this bus and drove like 13 hours overnight to Edinburgh. Wow. Um, because I was in Plymouth, which is like way Southern, like Southwest England. Mm -hmm. And then we went all the way up. Like we went like through Wales cause we had to pick up some other students at a different school mm -hmm. and all kinds of stuff. But I mean, I, my back hated me after that bus ride. <laughs> it was worth so it. much. It was, it was. And we stayed in a hostel that was like really cold. It was in like this old church that had been refurbished Ooh. into a hostel. Yeah. Oh, that's kind of spooky though. Oh, it was so spooky. Um, especially the showers, they were terrible, but, oh. <laughs> um, but I loved Edinburgh and, mm -hmm. um, I knew that one day I would have to go back to Scotland mm -hmm. and see the Highlands because I was yeah. just like so so excited and like enraptured by the idea of the Scottish Highlands and locks. Mm -hmm. um, and so when my mom and I were planning our trip to Scotland last year, mm -hmm. I mean, we were going to be there for like 10 days. And I was like, we have to have at least like a day tour, if not a multi-day tour of the Highlands. Like that's mm -hmm. a, that is a must. Um, and I was really excited to find tours that went up to Loch Ness. Um, mm -hmm. And Loch Ness is pretty far north compared to Edinburgh in Scotland. So mm -hmm. it is like, uh, the full trip like around was like a 12 hour day trip. So it was like a full day of stuff, but the yeah. height, like the, the peak of the trip was a, uh, like a midday boat tour at Loch Ness. So we got off the shuttle that we were riding on. It was very comfy, like 16 passenger bus and we grabbed lunch and then we all got on this ferry boat tour and it was, we were so lucky because it was sunny all day mm -hmm. and it was just oh my gosh that it was sounds gorgeous perfect. it was literally like I think almost exactly a year ago like today <gasps> that I went on this tour, happy so. uh exploration anniversary yes um because it Although was March, being it was on a ferry March. oh sorry what were you saying I was just saying being like uh it, it was early March when we went oh so, oh yeah. I love that I I do right. think um floating in the middle of Loch Ness on a ferry is a bit horrifying but also gorgeous <laughs> but very gorgeous it's, it's interesting because the the locks in Scotland are so narrow mm -hmm. they're they're huge I mean they're mm -hmm. massive bodies of water but compared to a lot of the bodies of water that we have over here mm -hmm. they're extremely narrow like they like if you look at them on like a topographical map they just mm -hmm. look like these little like streamers mm -hmm. <laughs> almost um and so you could always see either side of the bank at all times interesting um, and it was gorgeous because it's like there's pine trees and evergreens everywhere yeah. and like these rock formations and we saw goats oh like rocks. highland goats yeah we just saw oh. they were just, like there was a baby it was so cute ah they either goats the those highland goats to me i've never seen one in person so you you had a magical moment there with that because but from pictures um they either seem like super majestic or like whenever they're shedding they look like a hot mess <laughs> they look like they look not not quite right whatever it's like half of them is one way and the other half is still puffy from the winter yeah I think they look oh funny. my gosh yeah I think that they were still pretty puffy mm -hmm. um because it was March and it, I mean it's pretty cold in Scotland in March mm -hmm. um but I would say yeah we we weren't like super up close because obviously you know we're floating down the middle of the lake the mm -hmm. loch um and but the the tour guide was like oh look like this is actually really rare to see like we don't see these wow. every time we're on the ferry so it was just like a very magical day in general it was it was close yeah. to your birthday or on yes. your birthday so this was actually a few last years later year. oh, okay yeah. but yeah, this yeah. was last year yeah so that's really Fun cool. Time. So it was it was really neat because you were and then you got to be on a ferry on the lock and then there are all those evergreens and sounds gorgeous and then you got to see a goat. But I no did. Nessie sightings. No, that whole thing was just really interesting on the tour uh -huh. because I I would love to know about it because I yes. have been I've heard conflicting information and I want your first hand account. <laughs> of, yes, absolutely. Of it. Yeah, if you're ready, I'll just go right into it. I am prepared for this. Let, Amazing. Let's see who should have won the fist fight 
<laughs> at recess. <laughs> so, um, I, you know, when you hear about Nessie or you've seen the pictures, you think mm-hmm. of this sort of like long necked water monster that looks kind of like a plesiosaurus, like, mm-hmm. you know, sea serpent kind of thing. Um, that just sort of like runs into boats or like catches explorers off guard. They're like, oh my gosh. But <laughs> the tour itself was actually really cool because mm-hmm. I was expecting it to be kind of like campy and showy mm-hmm. and it wasn't at all. I mean, they were like, these extremely experienced people that you know keep everybody safe on the boat and they're like you know if you look over here you can see this blah 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 and Mm -hmm. um yeah it was just like the tour guides were super chill and they presented information about like the sonar equipment on boats that have sensed things moving in the water because Loch Ness is super deep. Like, I don't remember exactly what they said, but when they said it, I was like, oh my God, like it is really, really deep. Um, it is, it That's goes so interesting. I did not know that about Loch Ness because it I knew it was deep. narrow, although I didn't know it was so narrow that you could see the other side from the other side, kind of like the mm-hmm. finger. Well, uh, what I imagine is like the finger lakes in New York, but like, yes. it's, it's just so interesting. So it's super narrow, but the depth, I didn't realize how deep it was. I don't, I cannot remember exactly how deep they said it went, but when they told me I was very shocked and, and Mm -hmm. you, I mean, you can tell that water is so dark Mm -hmm. and, and there's no reason for it to be dirty. It's not like dark because it's dirty. It's not murky. Mm -hmm. It is just incredibly cold Mm -hmm. and it's incredibly deep. Mm So, um, so the, you know, these boats have this equipment that sense how deep the water is. So, you know, Mm -hmm. cause eventually you get to the, um, the end of the, the, the loch, um Mm -hmm. approaching the canal area Mm -hmm. and you know you don't want to run aground so they have Mm -hmm. these sensors on the boat but uh, that's another really cool thing about the locks in scotland there's this canal system that connects them so if you're in one lock and you're sailing north or south Mm -hmm. uh this canal system will like terrace your boat down oh i know exactly what you're talking about because i'm it's kind of it reminds me of the cno canal that used to and and they'll like almost like have these dam systems mm-hmm. that that's like exactly yeah that's interesting that they have a canal like that very cool yes. yeah it we saw several parts of it because we we drove up through uh fort william mm-hmm. um all the way up to the uh the sort of like bottom part of loch ness so you saw like there's this huge lock and then there's a town and there's just this narrow canal that runs through the town that transports boats mm-hmm. um and, it, and and it's i mean it's an engineering marvel i don't understand anything about it but it was really <laughs> fascinating to see um but yeah so when when the uh tour guys were talking about this sonar you know uh equipment and how it has since things I just thought that was so fascinating. Mm-hmm. Um, and also another really interesting thing that I did not know about Loch Ness is that there are literally like underwater caves. Like there's oh, underwater... that makes me very uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, there are underwater cave systems that oh. so like theoretically a creature mm-hmm. could come into Loch Ness from the North Sea. Like, wow. From the ocean. Yeah. Yeah. So there are, and the thing that the theory that I'm running with these Mm -hmm. days is that I think that Nessie sightings have been something like a Greenland shark. Ooh. Yeah. I could see that. Yeah. I could totally see that. Those things live forever. I mean, they get so old. Like there's, Mm -hmm. there's some shark that's like, I think close to 600 something years old. I, might I be remember making that hearing number about that shark. Yeah. And I think it's a, it's a, um, a female shark and she has like yeah. no teeth and she's like blind and she's yep. just floating around out there living her yeah. best life. Right. Yeah. And, and it's so interesting because, you know, something like 80% of the ocean is unexplored. So who's to say there's not like, a dinosaur-esque water serpent creature that could traverse these underwater caves and occasionally pop up into Loch Ness. And that's why it's not seen all the time because it can go in and out. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That could totally be it because it's like, oh my gosh, it might not be the super sweet Nessie that we all know and love. Everyone agree with me. (laughs) Absolutely. Um, But (laughs) it, it could be like these creatures that kind of 
bop in and out, like pop in and pop out. And it makes me wonder too, like, okay, this is why I'm so petrified of the damn ocean and like in seas and stuff and waterways. (laughs) You and and you and like a lot of people. (laughs) Oh, thank God. Because I'm just like, I I, I can't see what's under there. And then whenever you're talking about caves, those are already creepy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then it's underwater Hard pass. <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's so upsetting to me so that's yeah. really interesting especially because I did see I don't know if they talked about this or not and I don't I honestly don't know how this creature could even get to that part unless there's these really big underwater caves and this is like kind of gross but some people have thought that maybe Nessie was like a whale penis <laughs> because <laughs> like whales have these really long snaky looking ones and they'll like float on their backs and they'll put their peens in the air but I'm like why would a whale go (laughs) to the Loch Ness like how would it get in there I don't think that one's valid I think that was someone being a jerk and I took the bait and then (laughs) oh no I'm like I could totally see it I was like oh wow I can see it and then the other one is of course that the guy that had um the Oh my gosh, what is it called? Of course, my cats have the zoomies right now too. So if you hear it bustling, that's what's (laughs) happening. Um, But uh, the guy who owned, he owns like a hostel or a hotel or something like that. And he was doing it as a publicity stunt or something. Mm. But I don't know if they talked about that on your tour at all, but it sounds like even if that's the case, like if it is a publicity stunt, doesn't matter because it's still very deep we don't know what's down there and like you were talking about how we don't know underwater stuff very like we can't explore it. Mm-hmm. i forget the exact number but there's like a certain number of new sea creatures found each year lots of them yeah. were ones that they thought had gone extinct or that the like evolutionary line had ended or something like that. i don't know what i'm talking about but <laughs> it's like really creepy to me because it, it, like they could find something down there yeah absolutely i mean uh. yeah when When they're discovering, like, thousands of new species every single year, it's like, Mm -hmm. you know, who's to say it's not something that looks like a water horse (laughs) with, like, a long neck. Yeah, a long neck. (laughs) That makes me like the watch Land Before Time. (laughs) I was literally just thinking about that because Mm -hmm. I grew up obsessed with those movies. Oh, my God, same. And so I would love if Nessie is some, like, ancient-ass, like, majestic creature. <laughs> <laughs> An ancient water long neck. <laughs> it's so funny because I always talk to people. This this just makes me love you even more that you also like <laughs> Land Before Time. Because I have not, I have yet to meet somebody else who likes Land Before Time or knows what I'm talking about. And I was oh like, God. that doesn't make any sense. I thought it was like a, a blockbuster film yeah like you know I like so where, too yeah so I, I loved that like my I, the whole I had franchise aunt, is amazing I had an aunt growing up who would buy me like every single one of the movies to like keep yes. at my uncle, my aunt uncle's house oh and I that's would, a good aunt yeah that's I awesome. was just like it was great but mm-hmm. uh yeah that absolutely love him I rewatched the original one as an adult several years ago when mm-hmm. it like popped on Netflix mm-hmm. and I sobbed like I, oh, I was like yes the I beginning cry at this when I, was a child? <laughs> I cry every time but I didn't know it was on Netflix I don't know if it still is this was a oh. while ago oh, damn. but okay. I, I just remember like re-watching it for the first time after like maybe 15 years yeah, or it more. holds up it holds up it totally does mm-hmm. and but yeah I was just like my heart <laughs> so sad <laughs> I did. oh it's so good so if there's any like long neck cousin that lives in the lock you're welcome us as yes. non-scots say that you're welcome <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> absolutely oh I love that well do you have any like interesting stories or lore that stuck out to you from the tour or from Scotland in general when you visited? Oh my gosh. I, I love Scotland so much mm-hmm. because I mean, even beyond all of the lore, which I still have only like scratched the surface. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it's just so beautiful there and, and you can, you can almost feel it. Like mm-hmm. when you, when you are there, it's, it's this like almost magical place to me, mm-hmm. at least like I remember. So 
Edinburgh became like my favorite city when mm-hmm. I first visited and that was my birthday weekend and I turned 21 it was my 21st birthday weekend I love that um which is anticlimactic for the whole like you know American drinking age thing because <laughs> yes, I, it of- was already legal there <laughs> just like i'm turning 21 and they're like cool good for you i guess <laughs> but no it was great i i had just never seen anything like scotland or or like edinburgh before i mean they call edinburgh the athens of the north because wow. of the roman hellenistic architecture that's yeah. there yeah. um i mean you step out of the central train station and there's like i said there's just like magic in the air immediately like you Mm -hmm. you are next to an extinct volcano Mm -hmm. as you get off of a train station and there's a medieval even before a medieval castle like on top of the extinct volcano i mean it's gorgeous and you know i like how can you not marvel at that or Mm -hmm. or feel like there's some kind of like otherworldly like Mm -hmm. thing happening it actually reminds me of um I think this is actually an Irish concept originally, mm-hmm. but the idea of thin places. Oh, yeah. Um, where it's yeah. like you, the, the, the sort of like veil between worlds is thin in certain places. And I mm-hmm. feel like that so many places in Scotland has like that the feeling thin to places. It. Yeah. 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 It was really cool. So, yeah, I don't know a whole lot about the, the lore of Nessie other than most of what they said on the tour. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, like pop culture things that I saw growing up. But mm-hmm. yeah, the uh, the tour was very interesting. There, one very cute thing that they'd had, there's like a little window on the boat and it has like a little Nessie sticker. So, it, <laughs> but it like comes in and out of like the, the water. So if you like took a picture, it would look like a Nessie is in the water. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cute. It was adorable. It was just this little like tiny black Nessie sticker. <laughs> and so if you like got the right angle with your camera, it, it would look like, like a, you spotted her. Yeah. Oh, I love yeah. that. It was fun. Yeah. They like wrapped up the tour and they're like, did anybody see Nessie? And they're like pointing at the little stickers. And oh that was, my like, God. I the love cute, that. cheesy, campy thing that they did. But yeah, most of it was just like super informative and mm-hmm. And I love stuff like that. I love like geological stuff, like exploratory stuff. I'm not going to be swimming in any w- underwater caves. No. Nope. Because absolutely not. But I'll listen to I'll listen to, I'll listen to the stories. Long. Yeah, yes. I'll listen to the stories <laughs> for those spelunkers out there yes. that are able to do things like that, like explore underwater yeah. caves or whatever. But yep. damn, I'm not doing that. <laughs> That's for braver people. Nope. Than right? Me. Absolutely not. But I'll listen to what they have to say precisely <laughs> for those braver than me <laughs> <laughs> i love Ugh. that so in case you don't know even though i talk about it all the time i which you probably already know that and <laughs> Haley both live in appalachia different places yes. she's more southern i'm more northern um well northernish and yes. <laughs> it's really cool that um so it sounds like Haley had a connection with some of the mountains that she witnessed yeah, it was incredible because, you know, the the tour guides on our bus tour and on the ferry tour were like really phenomenal people. Mm-hmm. Um, you could tell they really loved their job and they were excited about sharing stuff about the history. But mm-hmm. one of my favorite things was learning about the Caledonia mountain range and seeing it mm-hmm. because it used to be part of Appalachia. Like they were the same range when, you know, Pangea was still together. Mm-hmm. So this is like ancient, ancient mountain range which is why you know people will sometimes like rag on the Appalachian mountains sometimes because they're Mm. like they're not that tall and I'm like that's because they're like a billion years old (laughs) they're so old they're so old and And people don't understand that the older a mountain range is the lower and smoother and more rounded they become yes and that is exactly what the highlands in Scotland are for the most part is this Caledonian mountain range and it was wild for me to see it in person because they look so similar wow that's so interesting it was so interesting the biggest difference is that because of the Scottish timber industry Mm -hmm. there's not that many trees so that's why you know you think of Scottish highlands and you think of these sweeping green hills and green and plains and everything and it's primarily because all the trees were chopped down, <gasps> no. which so is unfortunate, sad. but they have some really great conservation efforts in place Good. nowadays. Um, and so you can actually see like while you're driving through the highlands, there's mm-hmm. some patches that are like, here are the trees that we're not allowed to cut down for the next 
eight years. And mm-hmm. then as soon as they chop down like a section, they have to plant like two the new equivalent. ones for every one. Oh, I like um, the two for every one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So it's like making up for, you know, the taking away of the, the resources trees there. and the resources. Yeah. So, you yeah. know, it's definitely more sustainable these days. But I mean, Good. I remember just looking at some of these rock formations on these mountains and I was like, that could be in like North Carolina. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, the, like driving on the Blue Ridge Parkway in like in North Carolina and Virginia, I was like, this looks so similar, which I mean, in a way, they have a distinct... appreciate our stuff. Yeah, more. it does. <laughs> yeah, because they do have a distinct look. I mean, I can look out my window right now and I can see an Appalachian mountain just like in front of my face but it's like it has a a particular look like even going um more like east or west will the the ridges it's like the ridge line looks different and it's not the same so that's really interesting that you were like you had like a moment of like I'm home because of the mountains looking similar it was wild. It was so cool. That was something I was not expecting at all. And mm-hmm. I remember just looking at my mom and I was like, this looks like our mountains. Like <laughs> it looks so similar. So that was really, really cool. That had to have been validating too, where it's like, you're not a crazy mountain lady. Right? They are the same mountains <laughs> from the land before time. <laughs> yes, they are. Exactly. Uh-huh. That's really fun. Oh, could you? <gasps> Can you hear him? Yes. Oh. My favorite. <laughs> He's snorting into the microphone. Buddy. I guess he just wants to. Okay. You got to pick a spot here. I oh, my goodness. Oh. Hello, you little fluff monster. Here oh, look is. at him. Oh, I love him. Law is stuck. Oh. You're in some type of mood today, but there we go. Nix's claws get stuck in my shirts constantly. <laughs> <laughs> it sucks. Yeah. Oh, he has... Oh. This is a mess. That's why you smell like a stinker. It's because you have, <laughs> oh, he has poop stuck. This is so gross. Oh, I'm so no! sorry. <laughs> like, oh, no. <laughs> I'm like, why Poor did you get you? This is why he was like, mother, <laughs> right. help <laughs> me. I... <laughs> oh, Something... oh, no. Oh, this is horrifying. <laughs> Oh no, <laughs> dude! Ah, it's touching me. No, could you? Oh boy. Okay, I'm gonna have to give him a bath in a second. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> You're covered in He's covered in shit. I'm covered in shit, buddy. This is. <laughs> ah. never happened before. like even like no, I'm not even I'm not even talking about like on an interview thank god you know me <laughs> oh no oh that's bad okay oh. poor Kachu well <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry Haley <laughs> just being a professional <laughs> This is so upsetting. I'll have to send you a picture of him after he gets out of the please. tub because whenever oh he's God, wet, please. it's absurd. I bet. Oh no, oh, that used to happen to my cat Gingy. She was so oh, fluffy. Gingy. Yeah. Her main coon. And... Oh, that would do it. Oh yeah, <laughs> she's so fluffy, and we would just have to bathe her occasionally because she just gets shit stuck to her. <laughs> He was like, like what oh, are you gonna do? Do? well also the other thing is I, I didn't realize it because his face is so flat he swallows a right. lot of air and yeah. so he farts a lot like he's a stink <laughs> he's total stink butt so whenever he was yeah. like oh did you fart on me and nope it was just nope it's just shit poop everywhere <laughs> 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 poor kachu well <laughs> thanks for being on creepy corn folklore <laughs> I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> oh my god. Um <laughs> even even if there's poop stuck to Kachu's butt, you're always so <laughs> encouraging. Yes. <laughs> every every week Haley will send me like a message about like what she liked about the episode. It's like so sweet. So thank uh, you for being I, so lovely. Of course. I I love listening to the episodes. I'll just like 
make my coffee or breakfast and listen to it on Monday mornings and just oh. like vibe and listen to the creepy stories and folklore stuff. And I just love it. It's just so soothing to me. Thank you. Well, before you go and before Kachu has a bath. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, I have a game that we can play that's Nessie related. Oh, I'm excited. I'm Are so you ready. ready? Yes. Okay. Would you rather be cursed to haunt Loch Ness or a crumbling castle forevermore? Oh man, that's kind of a hard choice because there's so many like crumbling castle Mm -hmm. things in Scotland in Mm -hmm. particular, but the lock is so pretty. Mm -hmm. I feel like if I'm, if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna haunt something, yeah, I'm gonna, like, make people shit themselves mm-hmm. and, like, actually spook some people, mm-hmm. the lock would make more sense because okay. there are more people that visit the lock as opposed to, like, a crumbling castle. That's true. That's true. So, Some of the castles yeah. there are, like, pretty desolate in their yeah. level. And so they're not really visited. Yep. Whereas the lock people visit. And now that I know about the underwater caves and stuff, if you're a ghost or a haunt of some sort, you don't mm-hmm. have to breathe. You can explore right? down there. And, and like, if no you find danger. something crazy, yeah, what are they going to do? Kill you? You're already dead. Right? So. <laughs> like, I'm already dead. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Would you rather have a run in with Nessie, Kelpies, or Selkies? Oh my gosh. And for those that don't know, I, I'm pretty sure you know this already. Like, Nessie obviously is Nessie. Um, mm-hmm. Kelpies are the water horses that try and drown you. And then Selkies are the um, seal people usually seal women where they'll be a seal but then they'll take off their pelt and whenever they take off their pelt they become human so that's just the quick recap if it's gonna be a run-in and they're not like the kelpie in ashes (laughs) (laughs) then i would choose nessie because i feel like there's the least amount of danger with that one (laughs) she just majestically swims right Right? There's no, mm-hmm. like, she's going to uh, draw drown you in you. and drown you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. Um, if you could have any fae creature as a pet, what would it be? And this isn't just related to just Scotland either. This can be any any otherworldly creature. Honestly, and this comes with a caveat that it would have to be, like, Laken. <laughs> I would choose a Kelpie because Yay! I love horses. <laughs> And I I love horses and I love water. So it's the perfect combination as long as it doesn't try to drown me. (laughs) (laughs) No promise. No, I'm just kidding. Right. I think that's amazing. And also uh, to the spooky soul listening, uh, Haley's referring to Ashes, my dark fantasy novel um, that I won't shut up about. So um, that's what she's referring to. Same. I won't shut up about it either because it's fantastic. Well, thank you. Well, now we get to turn the tables because... um, at the end, I really want people to um, know where to find you and to know about your writing journey and your author journey, because yes. you're going to be an author very soon um, yes. with your first debut novel. Um, yes. And so uh, I'm going to, of course, include everything in the show notes below. Um, uh, and But why don't you let us know more about like your music, your book release, and where people can find you? Yes, absolutely. So I am a composer um, and I do some freelance com- compositional work mm-hmm. and that you can find information about that. I do commissions for all kinds of things. I'll write a 60 second long book trailer for you. Mm-hmm. I can do like wedding music. I've done that before. I do mm-hmm. all kinds of things and you can find information about my commissions on my website, which is HaleyTurnerWrites.com. Um and yeah, that'll be your an music is link amazing. To to. Yeah, I'll <laughs> definitely you. have the the <laughs> link below. But um, for those of you that don't know, it's spelled H A Y L E Y. Yes, uh, that spelling of Haley. <laughs> that spelling of Haley, and your music yes. is phenomenal. I oh, love <laughs> everything. Every time I hear it too, because um, you use it in like your promotional material and things mm-hmm. like that for teasers for your book. Um, I'll be like, who sings this? And every time it's like Haley Turner. And it's like, <laughs> wow, I'm being stupid. <laughs> it's almost yeah, like it, you're a composer or something. Right? I know, right? Yeah, no, it's it's fun to be able to be like a one woman band in some ways. <laughs> with I technology the way it is. It, it's like, it's definitely a lot of fun. I, I get to engage in sort of like 
musical play in a way mm-hmm. when I write my own stuff because I just get to like mess around with things in like Logic Pro or GarageBand or something and yeah. that's a lot of fun but yeah so I compose things um my music is generally very like orchestral mm-hmm. and um I used to describe it as sounding like a Disney princess threw up on it <laughs> because, <laughs> because I tend to write very like pretty things um uh-huh. But I you can, can I do can... some intense stuff though. Too. I've heard yes. you have a range, but I do also yeah. have like a total soft spot and like a lean toward the Disney princess threw up on it vibes. Uh, I'm totally absolutely. here for it. <laughs> Same. Give me, give me Alan Menken all day long. Um, but yeah, so there's that. Um, and then my debut novel is called The Prince of Tirana, and it is going to be the first in a series um, and it's an epic romantic fantasy series. Mm-hmm. Um, and it is, I have a tentative date in my brain, but I'm not going to jinx it. And Don't jinx it. it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you can look out for it sometime this summer. I love it. Um, and I'll be announcing stuff about, uh, arc copies going out very soon, which is exciting. So I'm in the, the sort of like last stages of editing for, for it yeah. for now. Um but yeah, I, I'm don't excited. be jealous. I got to already read it. I mean, she it was <laughs> it was while I was still in like the critiquing phase slash ready to publish phase. I was kind of in the middle there, but I already got to read it. But in case you don't know, um ARC stands for advanced reader copy. And yes. so if there's a spooky soul listening that's interested in um epic romantic fantasy um especially like for the summer oh my god um yes. but with the seasons changing and stuff I think that would be cool and don't you do you have a sign up sheet for that or is or yes okay then I you do. can sign up and then you might yep. be chosen to get an arc copy of the prince mm-hmm. of Tirana. yes I I have that open it will be open for the foreseeable future <laughs> nice but yeah, you can find those links. The, those links are on my website. They're on all of my socials. My my social handles are at Haley underscore Turner underscore Writes. And again, my name is H A Y L E Y. <laughs> yes, and Writes as in W R I T E S. Yes, exactly. <laughs> not, not like you're writing because you're right. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why I'm like over explaining that you write things, but knowing <laughs> my brain, if I were listening to this, I would be like, oh, okay. Maybe she's right-handed. Like I don't know. I would have been. <laughs> I would have been dumb about it. So I'm just it spelling happens. out all of it. But yeah. yeah so it. I'll make sure that I include your information below so that people can find you, um, oh, or commission you. you, or sign up for an arc. This is so exciting. I'm just like so exciting, excited for oh. all the things that are happening in the next couple like months for you. I know. I it's like simultaneously scary and very exciting for me as well. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That doesn't go away. Oh boy. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love that. Well, thank you so much for your time, Haley, and for talking about your experiences. I really, really appreciate it. Of course. Thank you so much for having me. This has been so much fun. <laughs> I'm so glad. <laughs> I appreciate it. We'll talk to you soon. Sounds Bye. good. Bye. Thanks to all you spooky souls out there for listening to Creepy Core and Folklore. Follow on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and TikTok if you're looking for more uncanny content. If you have your own tales to tell, you can email creepycoreandfolklore at gmail.com. If you liked this, please leave a review wherever you get your podcasts, or tell a friend who might enjoy these stories to spread the word. If you're interested in dark fantasy, check out my Hollowverse series. Ashes is available now in paperback and ebook on Amazon and audiobook on Audible, and the sequel is underway. I'm Iona Wayland, and I'll see you next time.